Hey, welcome to the podcast, everybody. Uh, this is Eric Worrell out here in the Rent Prep office, and I'm sitting uh, very close to Steve White. How you doing, Steve? I'm doing well, Eric. A little close today. Yeah, yeah. For those of you that are not watching the video and you're just listening on the podcast, uh, we have a special guest in the podcast today. We have Esther from Avo. How you doing, Esther? Good morning. Doing really well. Happy to be here. Thank you. So, Esther, you're out in uh, Seattle, Washington, right? Yes. Yeah, so it's morning there. It's afternoon out here in uh, Buffalo, New York, and... Uh, we decided to have Esther on the podcast because we have about six different uh, blog posts that do pretty well for us. We get a lot of traffic on them, and you know, we, we give the best advice that we can give uh, from our experience of dealing with landlords and tenants. But Avo is actually an online legal directory, and uh, Esther is uh, part of the uh, corporate council. As I mentioned, we have you on here because uh, we've got some questions for you, and I know you got some answers for us. And uh, I'll start it off. Uh, we, we have a blog post. It's about pest control. Uh, we found that pest mm -hmm. control is a huge issue between landlords and tenants because nobody wants pests in their apartments and nobody wants them in their rental units. So the, uh, the first question I have for you when it comes to pest control is how does the lease play into it and who is responsible for pest control? Great question. The lease is the first place the landlord is, you know, it's the first line of defense for the landlord to spell out the obligations and expectations on both sides um, around pest control. And so landlords come into the relationship with an obligation to maintain their their structures and keep them vermin free. Um, so generally, you know, they need to be responsible for pest control, for um, keeping infestations away. But there are situations where a tenant uh, can, you know, have certain living standards or behaviors or things that they're doing in their unit, which lead to an infestation. And in those cases, the tenant um, could very well be responsible for taking care of pest control. So there is this general umbrella that the landlord is responsible for pest control and for maintaining the structures. And then there's this, this exception where if it's the tenant who has caused the infestation, the landlord can show that they've caused the infestation, could, could be responsible for fixing that situation. I'll give you two really good real life examples that I that uh, that stick out in my mind. One would be tenant moves into uh, the new unit, um, they get there, and on day one, they realize that there's a cockroach infestation. Mm -hmm. That's the landlord's responsibility, right? Right, and again, to address your question specifically, the lease is your opportunity to set out the rules and expectations. And the lease, you know, generally will say, should say that the landlord's delivering the unit in this condition and is responsible for pest control. Um, and then it's always good to have a carve out uh, that explains to the tenant that if it's something that is, results from their habits or their living standards or something they're doing in their unit, that they will be responsible for that. But yes, on day one, the tenant moves in, there's a cockroach infestation. That's going to be most likely the landlord's responsibility um, and especially if it's something that has been an ongoing problem with the building, because it's likely just a continuation of a condition that was already existing that the landlord has been dealing with. Right. The other example would be one that we just came across not too long ago uh, and speaking with a landlord. Um, he was renting out uh, mobile homes. These people had left garbage all over the place. They started having major raccoon problems. And the hmm. tenant didn't want to pay for having the raccoons removed. In that case, the tenant created that problem. I would say that there's a good argument for that. Um, and in these situations, it's really important for the landlord to document things along the way. Mm -hmm. um, because at the end of the day, if the landlord has a situation that's out of control and the tenant isn't fixing the problem, the landlord might need to take legal action. It, it, it really can move beyond, you know, who's going to fix this to, hey, this isn't working. And the landlord might seek something like a comply or quit notice and go, you know, take it through the courts at this point to get an order for the tenant for the tenant to either comply or you'll move forward into an eviction situation. Sure. Okay. 
Um, I have a question. As far as uh, does it matter what type of pest it is? I mean, because there's obviously a big difference between having termites versus, you know, bed bugs or rats. Um, have you seen anything or any advice on the type of vermin and does that actually matter? It does matter. Um, and we don't want any of those things, but there are differences. And geographically, even, there are certain pests that are more common to some areas than others. Generally, um, it's the, the type of infestation is what's, you know, what you're going to look at first. Um, and generally, if it's something that is common to the area or an ongoing issue with that building or that unit, you know, that the landlord knew about and knows about, that's the landlord's responsibility, um, no matter what the pest is. There are certain, um, geographical regions now where bed bugs and let's talk about bed bugs we all are hearing about them all the time now and you don't want them they're really hard to get rid of they're a big epidemic uh, and I, I know back east they are a particularly yeah, huge um, deal here. a problem yep. Yep. huge problem yeah. um, a nightmare really and so you know they're on the rise and there's actually legislation happening around bed bugs specifically um, those are state and local laws, so it's important for landlords to familiarize themselves with the laws that apply to where they live, but generally um, to where their you know the, where their properties are. Um, but generally, with things like bed bugs, um, there might be state laws that actually uh, make make it the landlord's responsibility to keep those infestations or treat those infestations under control. Okay. So just make sure that you're keeping, you know, minding your state laws as well and researching that if you're the landlord or the tenant. Right. And, you know, with termites, we're going back to this warranty of habitability. And some states have passed legislation that it doesn't specifically list pests by name, but something like a termite that can cause structural damage will be covered by the laws of some states because you have this as a landlord an obligation to keep the structure safe. So there's legislation passed that says in, in California, for example, um, the legislation doesn't list termites by name, but the very nature of the insect is that it causes structural damage. So if there is a termite infestation, it's the landlord's responsibility under this law to um, take care of that infestation. That's interesting. Uh, Esther, as far as uh, this is a question that we saw actually in the comments on the blog, it said, um, can mm -hmm. the tenant legally withhold rent until the pest control situation is taken care of? It depends. And <laughs> as, it, it's never as that, lawyers it's like never to that say, simple. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, it does, but it does depend. And if the tenant has given written notice to the landlord and said, there's this problem. The landlord does need to take care of the infestation. And if the landlord doesn't do that in a reasonable amount of time, then yes, in many states, um, actually all states have their own laws. Uh, it, the details can vary. So again, you need to familiarize yourself with your state and local laws, but um, the tenants can, can withhold rent. And what happens next, again, depends on where you live and what those laws look like. So, you know, this is a great place where, you know, I'm counsel for AVO. This is a great place to point out, again, that things like our Q&A, um, where, where you can confidentially go and ask your questions, would be really useful to somebody who's like, hey, I have a tenant who's withholding rent. I haven't fixed the pest problem, but I'm going to next week. And how do I get my money after I take care of that problem? You know, or even if you needed to go into something like an advisor session for $39 to, to have a more specific um, personal conversation, that's a great resource for landlords to use.